Live stream. I want to start building a well, a sawhorse. Yeah, a sawhorse. Oh, the camera's up here. Look at the lens markers. It's not, not your beautiful self. All right, let's bring you down a bit. So, what I've got is some scraps of old wood I just found. I'm going to use whatever I've got. In this case, I've got these bits of pine here, which are not pallet wood or anything like that. It's literally just bits of shutterboard, for which I need to clean up. They're going to be the legs. The thing about a sawhorse is it needs to be the right height. And I've just got to press live on the other string. There's two strings to that. Uh -huh. I've got the main string and then this short string. Just hope it makes me look skinny. No? Oh, okay. Well, let me just go live on here. Blimey. Don't choose. I've got, I've got to pick settings. Manage broadcast. Select the broadcast. That one there. Select and start streaming. Okay. Hopefully it is live. I'm hoping both of them are live now. It doesn't tell me. <laughs> That's really annoying. That it is. What's that now there? Uh, it just says excellent connection. And it's not saying anything at all. Right. Well, we'll see in a moment. I've got to restart, I've got to restart, who cares? Anyway, <laughs> we should do, but there you go. I'm on this one. So, what I've got here is a piece of old pallet. Yeah, hence nails. I'm going to use that, because what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a leg set for which I have a replaceable top. That is the plan. Oh, I think I am live. It says I'm live. Okay. I'm live on the other stream as well now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to clean these bits of wood up first. And I'm going to have to join the legs into this main beam here. I've got a you know, bit of old pallet, which is about three inches square, about 75 millimetres square. A bit of old crappy bit of pallet. And we'll clean that up. And probably make it look fairly decent as well. We'll put a tray in as well. They won't all be in this live, live stream because cutting the old legs in, that's what takes the time. But first of all, we need to clean all the materials up. So I'm going to move you back a little bit. <laughs> oh, can I my arms aren't long enough? All right, can you see the bench? Because all I can see is writing at the bottom of the screen. Yes, there it is. Behind all the writing at the bottom of the screen. I don't know what I can do. I'm busy all the way over there. Let me just move you down a bit. See my boom? Is that cool? Look at that. My boom arm. There you go. Get a little bit higher. That's a bit better. Right. I've also got this behind here, which is going to be the sacrificial top. I think if anything you can have the saws, you can end up chopping it, yeah, chopping your wood with your, your saw. And by doing that, you can go crack but time I've made a new saw horse. What I'm going to do is I'm going to so we can just replace the top. There's another bit of old shitty bit of board I found next door, and uh, I think that will do a bit of old deal. A bit of Douglas, actually. Just, yeah, a bit of old Douglas. And that'll do, that'll be the bottom, because there's a bit of, um, Back on that edge there, yeah, on parallel, and then yeah, that'll be the bottom, and that'll be the top. But I'll clean it up anyway. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is two reasons actually. One is, like I said, about having a sacrificial top, but the other thing I want to be able to clamp my wood to it. There's also going to be some holes in there as well, so I can use my hold fast. So I've got these um, uh, marbles hold fast here, these are brilliant, so I've got two of these. And if it's slot into a hole, and then you can just screw them down and clamp your wood down. So I thought to myself, if I had two of those holes, two holes, one there and one there, or maybe one in the middle as well, I can then position these accordingly, so I can clamp a piece of wood down as well. And these things are brilliant. They don't, make, I don't think they make them anymore, unfortunately. They've got a lot of things these days. And then it's China's taking over, making all the stuff, which happen to be rather head crap. Anyway, that's another story. So... Now currently, I have got the other stream going, and everyone's looking at the bench, and they can't necessarily... Hang on, what's going on? The camera stopped. Blimey. So let me just uh, restart that camera. And get it activate. Why is it not doing its thing? Is that why? Right, that's weird. Stream seems to have gone a bit loop. Oh, we have a camera. Oh, we have a camera. Is that all right? Right, hopefully. Oh, that one's working. 
So on the other stream, we've got an overhead camera. <laughs> I can't do it on the on this vertical live stream. It's not possible uh, yet. But what we need to do is remove some of these old nails that are in there as well. They can stay in. I'm just going to give a good old bending. Yeah, have a bendy nail, didn't you? All right, and then we'll get rid of those. Um, we're not going to be on the plane over the, the nail side because <laughs> that won't be a very good idea. No, so that's one nail gone. Right, there's no one here. Let's get rid of that. So we'll, yeah, obviously we're clean these bits of wood up as well. Because so, they're in there, they are bits of wood, aren't they? You know, they do the job for a sawhorse. Now, sawhorse, the height of it, doesn't really want to be... Um, there's no standard height, unless you're a standard size. So if you're a standard size, it's a standard, yeah, standard height. But if you're short like me, you obviously want a little bit lower. Because the thing about sawhorses, it's got to be able to be the height where you put your knee on it. So you can put your knee on your piece of wood to, you know, to secure your piece of wood on top of your sawhorse. Now, up on the wall behind you, behind you as well, there is um, two sawhorses, sawhorses over there that I use. Two of them. But I'm only making one, because this is literally just on the purpose of putting a piece of wood on so I can cut them with a panel saw. Because using a panel saw like this in a vice, it's totally wrong position. You need to be there and that way, you see? Yeah, it's a natural in the voice. It really is. I think so. I'm sure many other people do as well. I'll grab a hammer. If I had a hammer, I'd have it in the morning. I think I'd get the pictures on there. Will that come out? I've got some. Where are my nail pulls from? They're blue. Can you see them? They're blue. But I can't see them. Where'd they go? Oh, there we are. Found him. Pull your, pull your teeth out. That's what you do if you live in the UK these days, apparently, I've heard. You pull your own teeth. Because you, you, you can't get a dentist. <laughs> so that's a profession you need to go into. Need, need to become a dentist. There we go, if you go by that film, whole nine yards, they've got the highest suicide rate, so maybe not. Right. Use your fingers, all you do is you do the finger tests. You run your hands over all the sharp nails, if they're still poking out, they cut you. And then you know, don't you? See? Now this face here, you know, oh, one face on this, I need to make sure it's good. Also, I need to do some chopping out, so I don't want to be chopping out with those nails. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, the sensible thing here to do would be to have the nail side on a face that is that doesn't require any chopping down. In this case, down. So this in that case this is going to be the top. I don't want to have it that way round. Okay, because then when I chop the legs in the side there, I might be getting the nails. So I don't want that. So I'm gonna have them go down. So I don't want to do anything on the down on the down side. And I'm looking at this, this isn't straight. It, yeah, it certainly is not straight at all. It is very, very, it's got a bit of a twist. What is it a twist? Ooh, tiny twist. And it's lumpy. A bit like my derriere. Yeah, lumpy derriere it's got. So what we're going to do is I'm going to plane that flat and true that up. Maybe use a couple of winding sticks or something. Just, you know, give it a bit of these boards like that. And that way I can make sure that's true. So when I mount this piece on the top, which also I need to make sure it's true, I can get a good fit on there. And what that does is that gives me somewhere all the way around to use clamps. Now, if you see saw horses, which are just like funny shapes and stuff, you can't get your clamps on them. You've got the legs sticking out the side here, you can't get the clamps on. Because a, a, a traditional way of doing a saw horse is you chop your legs in um, over the top, so literally proud on the side, so that's, that could get in the way. I want to be able to use clamps, using G clamps around the edges so I can secure a bit of wood, also use those hold downs if I want to. So that's, that's the plan. But first of all, let's true this one up. Uh, the top ball won't be going on just yet anyway because I need to uh, fix, fix the legs. I've got to fix the legs. Yeah. Right, so I'm probably going to do this over a couple of streams, I reckon. Move your hand a little bit. Watch me in the mind the moment. Oh, I've got a microphone here. I'm dual streaming at the moment. Yeah, there's two live streams going on at the moment. How about that, eh? Crikey, impressed. Eh? That's totally the wrong place. I've got a microphone in the way over there. Oh, crikey. Back over. Da, 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 da. That'll do. Oh, that will do. I can always bring it back a bit. Or oh, I can just bring it in there. Oh, there we 
Okay, there we go. So, we need a hand plane, which is hiding there. Right, this is my number five, Stanley Bailey. What I want to do is true that up. So first of all, I'm going to use two pieces of wood, one either end, like so. You really need to reposition that camera. Do, 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 do. Right, I've done an audio check, check yeah, have I? It's a bit silly. Right, let's put that there, put that there. How's that? Is that better? Oh, you can see it now! Oh, what's going on on the screen? Well, I'm software I'm using to stream with. Okay, let's see. We have an audience. Oh, 24 people there, that's cool, that's cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to use winding sticks. Now idea of winding stick is you place one on one end, one on the other end. Now, when I was at school, we actually made proper winding sticks. I have actually still got them here somewhere. We thought I was, yeah, they were um, uh, a mixture of timbers. And uh, I haven't seen them for ages, actually. So what I do now is you see, I can then eye up along the two pieces of wood using my magic eye. That's it. That ain't far out. No. So end to end, there's not a twist in it, which is a good sign. This is a bit of old pallet, you know. <laughs> it's well travelled wood, it is. Yeah, well travelled. But anyway, so all I'll do is just clean up the basically. So let's make some shavings, shall we? Move that over there. Right. I always bring it back, make sure the blade or the plane iron is all the way out. And engage the plane iron. There you go, start. If the wood is crap on the surface, which this is, you might have a situation where you end up pushing shavings between the plane iron and the chip breaker. Because you're not creating proper shavings and being like creating this mess with this crap to start with. Piece of wood. Oh. Oh. That is a whole bit of wood. Oh, it feels horrible. <laughs> So taking the edge off the plane line as well. It'd be gritting. Right, we've got to do another seven. Just for fun. It feels like it's high on the end. It's more apparent. Yeah, that plane line needs number five. It needs a uh, sharpen. I think I've taken the edge off with a grit. This one's got much harder plane irons than these are hand forged plane irons in there. Victors. Which are superior. I know they're sorted. Any excuse to pick up the hand plane. Surprised how true that bit would is actually. I expect to see a hollow somewhere. Right. This is the bit that this is the face for which the top. Be fixed too. The bottom is going to stand, I'm not trying to play over that because I've got to keep I don't really want to be playing over a nail or something to help it. Right. 
definitely great in that wood. This is treated this way, so it's got some kind of preservative on it. If it didn't, but it has. It can be used yeah, for this sort of gel, if you've got it buying lumber just for that. Yeah, I've got loads of wood next door, I need to be used. Why well, that ends up in the fire, I'm not ready to burn wood that has chemicals in it. Not really, it's a bad over there. Nasty piece of wood. Yes, cleaning a pallet. Right, there we go. All that. It might, be, it might be a little bit lumpy, but it's actually surprisingly true. I did not expect that. Take the square in a bit of the top. That's the bottom. Tell the sign, just got the nails. I don't know if you saw my previous video, but this treated wood, I don't know how old it is. But there was a treatment I used to use tantalizer wood called osmosis. And osmosis is, is actually a, a process, but the name is particularly chemical was osmosis. But um, the thing about osmosis is this chemical that contained arsenic. I stopped that back in the, uh, oh, the late 90s, the early 2000s. I used to use a company called the Ellis Timber in Norfolk. They're heading them in Norfolk. And they, um, I don't know if they're still there, they probably are. But they, um, Jesus osmosis stuff years ago. Caused some such problems though. Because all the timber that they had already had treated. They still sold it, but they weren't supposed to. But as the wood come out of the uh, the pressure vats um, on their pallets and what have you, when they're being uh, treated, pressure pressure treated. All this stuff is just draining off and just end up all over the ground, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Toxic chemicals. Yeah, I'm sure that's not exactly environmental. The things we used to do, eh? <laughs> it's not clear, obviously. It's a saw horse. Because when I cut the legs, I want to make sure that all four legs are touching the ground. It'll make it easier to do the cuts because I've got to chop these legs in. So these are going to be the legs, and they're going to be chopped in. Also, I'm putting that tray on as well, I think. And you, and so you've got somewhere to put your tools while you're actually using it. Not for storage, just while you're actually using it. I'm also bearing my mind I'll put it as well. You've got to think of all these things, haven't you? You know, you mount on the wall or whatever, but I've got space underneath the wing, the sliding table that I probably live you know, under the, on the floor. So it's just how to use it. And there's something in, a, in response to one of my videos, I was asking about a sawhorse, because I was suggesting, oh, you know, I did some videos and stuff. I was all about making a sawhorse. I thought, well, I should do it, I should use it. So that's a good idea. So that is going to be the bomb. I'll just sand that when I'm ready. So that is the top. Square. Let's check it for square. If that's square, I'll be very surprised. Good God. I can't believe this is actually square. Out there, and it comes back in here. The ends are good, that's what matters. Because my legs are going to go. Blimey, I believe that. 
Can't be bad. Right, so that's the bottom. That's the bottom. So that's going to be the top. Um, so next stage, after I've trued this up, plain, let's take the thorn edge off. Who have we got in the chair? We've got no one in the other chair, I don't think. We've got people in this chair. Right. Hello, Green Civil Structural Engineering. Oh, super impressed. What with a bit of old crap? <laughs> oh, hello, Scott Sweetster. Made a couple of these uh, several years ago out of CLS. Well, I kind of done the same thing. I show you. There's two hanging up on the wall over there, which I use when I do put, put sheet material on. So I put a couple of bits of um, I've a couple of deals or a couple of two by threes, two by fours on there. Then I can work a flat for doing any sheet stuff. But I hardly ever do sheet work, you see. But I wanted one just literally for a sawhorse. Yeah, for smaller pieces of work, or if I want to do a bit of bashing on it or something, you know. So it needs to be able to, be able to cope. With, it needs to be able to cope with um, it's a bit of chisel work and a, a bit of lumping. Yeah, with old mallet. Yeah, a bit aggressive. Or even I want to do a bit of um, axe work, or even on there if I wanted to. But um, generally, generally, if you any axe work on that on there on that that stump with my murderer's apron on. So um, I know you in the other feed you can see that. My goal later on, I'll be full to do so, is to have more book hammer feeds. At the moment, can't do it very well. It keeps crashing. Okay. The computer's not strong enough. There's a piece, there's a piece of equipment called an ATM Mini, absolutely ideal for that job. And it's, um, you can, plug, you can stream directly from it as well, not to have to even go through a computer. It does all the heavy lifting, you see. It's all the video processing for you. That lightens the load on the computer, and then you can either do it directly or you can literally just um, uh, you know, feed it into the PC and then stream off the PC through OBS. The streaming software we use. There's other ways of doing it as well, you've got stream labs or restream, so you can stream to multiple platforms. It's like everything, isn't it? You know, everything takes money, and that's one thing I haven't got. Brook! Do, 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 do. Right. Yep. I could just run these all through the thickness there, but what fun is that? Great fire starters, you see? <laughs> the missus will be happy. Quitting all this fire start material. Some of this stuff is good though. I'm getting non -environment, environmental now. If you ever do this, right, whack it in a, uh, in a jar or you know, like a jam jar, put a bit of white spirit in there with it, and you've got five, five really good fire lighters in. Works really well. And some people say, why not barbecue fluid? But it, it goes off, it's too quick. You want, you want it to burn slow so it can actually um, ignite your sticks, the kindling. Tinder. Yeah, is that, tin is that your Tinder? That's a Tinder, isn't it? Well, I start. I was thinking it may be, like, what I should do is, you see, I might get myself a mankini, go in the woods somewhere, and light fires in the, wo in the woods, and then I might get millions of ooze there, might I? Like, what do you reckon? Do you know how that work? No? Oh, okay. That's a bad idea, you reckon? You, you, what did you say? You say an opposite effect? That would have. Is that what you're trying? Oh! That's mean. Right, there you go. And I took the, the thorn edge, because these literally were tongue groove boards for shutters. So they volley them here in France. And so there was a tongue in the degree of which I cut them off before we went live. Um, and I thought, oh, I don't go live. So they're just basically just playing the, the thorn. Uh, finish off, yeah. Now, probably end up making the edges all nice. Also, you've got to think about the angles because your feet, you know, the bottoms of the, the foot will end up being at a different angle. What you can do is round it off, then it doesn't matter. You know, if, if you run a 
doesn't matter what angle it is, I need to see what's round. Whereas if you have, obviously, if you, otherwise you did have a, you know, scribe it to the floor. So, okay, so I've got our four legs. And what I tend to do is, you know, I'll cut one first, then I'll use that as my pattern for the other three legs. And what I'm going to do is, this one here is going to be, that is the top. So this is going to be the main structural part. This is the structural part of the actual sawhorse. And then the sacrificial top will go on top of that. But if I grab one leg, I think myself, so if you, there's some criteria for your sawhorse, all right? One thing is, a sawhorse is no good being like that, all right? Because you need some splay on your legs. Get back you need some splay, you need some splay on your legs, okay? <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, anyway, you've got to have some splay in the next, which means you're dealing with angles. You can't just screw it on there like that because you're going to have big old voids. I suppose you could create some packers and stuff like that in different angles. You could do that, but we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to chop it in. But I don't just want a splay. Legs, I don't splay our legs like that. No, I want a splay our legs like that as well. All right? Crikey. Tear to her eye. So anyway, so, like so, which means you've got two angles to deal with, which is a pain, real pain. Now I'm not going to chop one side right in, but the, the top face will be chopped right back in, or part way. Now sometimes, if these are thicker legs, I might have just um, done half that joint onto this, onto this rail. The other, the, the, you know, the other trick is literally to make it uh, easy for yourself. You could actually cut this so the into the angle, so it becomes bit of a, a, a triangular shape with that top right and then the legs would naturally you could make this really easy then but you've got nothing to lock the legs into place you'd be relying on your fixings and your glue and stuff. okay that might work for a while eventually they're just going to give up the ghost so what we're going to do is we're going to chop the legs in um make sure i've got the right round again that's the bottom yeah so we're going to be um chopping the legs in so they splay outwards that way but also that way but what you don't want is the legs to splay too much because then it'll just, uh, well, the legs will end up going like that. It's out on the floor. It's a bit too much strain on it. You can't, it's got to be around 30 degrees. And that, that, that way it transfers the load up each of the legs. But also out as well. But what you don't want it to be is to it's further out than the end of your sawhorse. The reason for that is if you, you know, want to cut a bit of wood on the end, they are cutting away. You don't want to be cutting into the legs, do you? No. You splay them as well from the inside, but not too far. All right, so I've got a bevel. So I'm going to use my bevel over here. Bevels can have my ears. I've got three in that cabinet. Why do I, why do I need three bevels? <laughs> right, so this is your bevel gauge. All right, so you basically you can. Move that about like so and create any angle and he just twists it at the bottom here and it locks into place. So you can so, you know, I'm not going to um fit myself, oh well, no, I'm gonna have got this specific angle. No, I can go with the flow. Flow with the flow. Don't like it, it's tough tea. Right, so the side myself, right, it's gonna oh, that much splur uh there. I know that the board is coming about two and a half inches off the end. So I need that coming in a bit more. I don't want to be hitting it with the, I don't want it too far in because it's going to be unstable, but it needs to be far enough in so the actual legs do not interfere with the saw is going to be cutting, where the saw is going to be, you know, pushed back forward as I cut by a bit of wood. So I think about there. Right, so. Now I could put a clamp on there, I could put a screw down the middle if I want to hold it temporarily while I mark it, but I'm not just going to hold it like so. I say to myself, well, that looks about right, boy. And <laughs> create two, two marks with a pencil, or even better, a marker knife. Like this one here's my Kiridashi marker knife. I made it of an old saw blade. And what you don't want to happen is that moving as you, you know, as you're trying to uh, mark it. So a clamp could be a good idea. But saying that, for the angle, I know I'm very confident that it's going to be the angle. Now, so I can move it up now and it'll stay put. You know, I'm not going to fix it at that point, I just went for the angle. Once I've got that, I'll use Kiridashi and then I'll mark that way and mark it that way. You know what, I just moved it. It's below me! Oh! Who thinks a silk could try me? I can use a clamp. Crikey! 
Mikey, it's about doing live with it. It's all about warts and all, it is. Warts and all. Alright. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna put a more clamp to that line I've already created, which is there. And then I'm gonna stand more of a chance of marking it without moving and not realise. Oh, move that. Right, that'll do. How's that? Oh, that's good. So I'm gonna run it down there like so. This one there as well. We can see it. We can do the same on the other side. And I apologise for those in the vertical screen if you can't see. Not me. I did do that camera. I was trying on the camera. I love the other camera. The phone seems to balance quite well. There's quite a good density. The um this camera above my head isn't too bad. That's okay. It's a bit, bit blown out here, I see. But when I try and use the other camera, which isn't actually working. Blown out, so um, it's very frustrating and annoying. But there you go. Like I say, these things are sent to try me. Right, so that, that is my angle of the dangle. Now, if I cut that perpendicular, so what I mean is, like for instance, that I cut the same depth there, there, and there. Obviously, it's going to be flatter. <laughs> it's, it's never going to stay up. Now, if you think of a Japanese saw horse, they're different. Now, you could do that. Now, if you've got, say, for instance, I don't know, three bits like this. Right, three by three like this, you can create a it's like a beam. The mortise, a short leg into there, and then the opposite above, which be which be which will be the leg, the main foot, yeah? It's like a stretch. And like, you know, a bit like a like a refractory table base. So you can have something like that either side, and then you can have you know, and then have you know, like that. And then you have little feet. That'd be more of a Japanese style sawhorse. But we're doing that. <laughs> no. So what we're gonna do is we've got to create some flare, which does complicate matters a little bit, but it's not difficult. So what we're gonna do is we're literally gonna be cutting that more on the top face, which is that one, yeah. And pretty much only just in on the bottom edge here, about a quarter inch on the bottom edge, and the top will almost go all you know, will meet, almost meet. It won't meet, but it's probably about one third in on the top. So it obviously doesn't want to be but it doesn't want to be deeper than the thickness of this piece of wood, does it? Because that'd be silly. Yeah, so it's going to be like that, but chopped in. And that way, you then got these shoulders, right? The shoulders are far enough from the outside edge, so you're not going to break off lumps off the end. So be careful. If you put too, too close to the end like so, and cut along there, this is then weak. There's no strength in that at all. You have to snap off in time, and then you just end up with a wonk, wonky leg. <laughs> and you don't want a wonky leg. No. So... I'm going to cut one, then I'm going to use that as my uh, template for all the others. So I know exactly how far I've got to come in at the top. I can't come in, in the top any more than the thickness of this wood. This is 27 mil thick, bone and am. Um, so I'm going to say, I'm going to come in, say, I don't know, I'm going to say 24 millimetres along the top, I think, down to about 5 millimetres along the bottom, just so it's, it's the, and it should be about right. I'm winging this, you know that, don't you? <laughs> I'm put that in the voice. Ah, da, 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 da. Right, I'm gonna. I wouldn't normally do this. I'll do it higher there so you can see. The problem is they always put that right in at the bottom. It's YouTube for you, aren't they? Oh, pesky, pesky, this. pesky YouTube. No, nope, we'll get his legs chopped in today. Right. Uh, first things first, though, which I haven't done yet. Is mark roughly how far I want to come out the top. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from this one because I'm not I'm not working that out. As you probably tell. I want to in, I'm going to come in so far at the top and then cut just shy on the back face, the bottom face here, and then chop it out and see how it looks, and then readjust it, cut a bit deep if I have to. You know, change the angle a little bit if I'm not happy with the display on the legs. And then once I've got that one, I can then transfer that onto. The others. So, you know, but you won't be too far at once, because obviously you go too far, well then quite frankly, oh god, better. What I've got to do, put more wood back in. It's easier to remove it, isn't it? I would say. Yes. Here's my marking gauge. It was up. Oh, there it is. Alright, these things, the old marking gauge is the mortise one, isn't it? But these, they're a great tool. 
But obviously some people use them a little bit wrong to make life difficult for themselves. Now I know this word is 27 mil, 26, 27 mil thick. It is 27. Now I'm going to take that down to about 24 millimetres. Now I'll show you something with these things. It's so easy. Was it 14 or was it 24? So I'll just tighten a little bit so they don't move about all over the place. I'll just pull it through, give it a bit of resistance. So for, I might do 22 actually. I'm going to go 22. Right. That'll do. That's the nearest down. But when you use one, okay, I, we know where the start and the stop is because obviously I've got my lines there. So I know my start and stop is going to be about as it travels up, it's about there, and the same for that one, about there. Right? When you use them all, that's not so critical on something like this, is it? Because it's a bit of old clip and it's a sawhorse, right? It's not fine furniture. But if you were doing, uh, yeah, let's say for your mark for patch mortars on a piece of furniture, maybe you're doing the um, the apron around it, you know, you've got better your legs together on the table. Um, with mortises, but you don't want to go, you don't want to mark past it. What you do is you put a little hole, you push it, your mark and gauge in one end, right? Because what happens is sometimes you're doing so you go past it, <laughs> and then you, you mark all your wood, and then what can you do with that? You create, you create a gouge in it. So if you put your little put your pin in there first, right, and then come from where you want to start, so you stick your mark and gauge in like so. And then bring it back at a slight angle, don't do it vertical, it needs to be at an angle. You do it vertical, you go all over the place, you'll never get your line. You need to like, come back at an angle. When you get to a point at the end, you'll feel it drop into that little hole you've just created, which I just did. It's dropped in, right? Exactly where at the end, where I wanted it to stop. Okay, something that's not really matter, but you know, if you're doing something a bit off, you know, just for a share with you. I'm, not, I'm kind of like that, you know. Did you know that? No? Okay. You don't believe me, right? <laughs> Straight, yeah, don't matter. Right, I'll see now. I oh, know I'll remove that there. Do, 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 and the same there. And also, I'll take a little bit off this back edge. I know there's going to be a splay, it's whether or not it's too much splay or too little splay. So, I'm going to do exactly the same with the marking gauge again, which is now, but this time I'm just going to oh, roughly quarter an inch, say. Quarter of an inch, no more than that. Uh, yeah, just this one. Same again. Put my little input in there, and then I can then run the Martin gauge. And if you light strokes, if, you, if you've got awkward grain, light strokes are better. So just do a feel, don't, don't try and do it all in one hit. It's quite hard to see all this wood because it's um, shit. <laughs> it's shit wood. Right, so I'm not going to move that there. I think I'm happy with that. I think so. So now what we do now is we cut it. Let me do a bit of chisel action. Oh, 60. Oh, chisel action. Does it, does it excite you? No, it doesn't. Okay. Come on, make it nice for you. I'm not doing that at all. We'll see. Right. Do 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 I think possibly the audio will be better in the short feed. Please let me know if the audio is okay. Oh, I'll have a nice chat at the end. Guarantee you are going to be perpendicular to your wood. Yeah, so I've got little screws in there and I push that in to the actual wood itself. I'm not going to cut right up to the line because I'll use a chisel to, to clean it up, you see. So we're going to come through the back here. And then, oh, that works so well. I'm so surprised how well that works. In and get that out of the way. 
I'm sold on this. I'm really sold on this thing. There's a video on the channel. I'm making one of these. If you're interested. See, it grips, it don't move. You see? Because of the two little screws poking through. Just just through, just through. And if you want to do some fart and nicer work, you just retract them and just clamp it down if you want. But um stuff like this. It's a great way to get started. If you you know, even if it's just full uh, getting that muscle memory, teach you basically how to use a, you know, to get a straight cut. <laughs> It should be all right now. Double check. I'm just looking. Into that, we are connected. Oh, that was close, wasn't it? Blimey! Right. Oh, you don't need it. I think we need to do some saw sharpening videos. Oh, sorry, sorry, it's starting to get a little bit, a little bit dull. See? About right there. Bum, bum, bum. Now, normally what I do is I do loads more cuts on it, but I'm not going to bother. <laughs> it's easy if you do. I'll go out for punishment, mate. I think this mallet is seen, it's seen it's had its day, isn't it, really? See all these, all these YouTubes are fancy mallets. I want a fancy man, I want a dead blow. A fancy dead blue man, that's what I need. See, you only had something for so long, you used it. Part of your work and what have you. It gets a bit sentimental, doesn't it, you know? So you think it's a little bit sentimental? Oh, is it just me? You can't really use a rope with this. Because it's um, at an angle. It's fair at the back, it's at the front. Normally, I'd be doing this downwards. Not normally, you chisel the boss. It's just for the purpose of the video, really, because I'm just going to see it very well. And also, I'll be over the top of it, nose above me, but then end up uh, seeing my ball hit my top of that. The thing about pine is it's not the easiest wood to uh, oh, chisel, isn't it? It's, it's very splintery. It's not like. It's not like. I don't know. Oh, it's not chestnut. Chestnut's very, chestnut's very easy to work. You know, it's, that's quite easy to work on. Unless you're using saws, power saws that burns like crazy. Get your eyes to them, that, um, water. Uh, when, when you're chopping it out. Yeah, when you're sawing cherry or machine in it. Oh no! I'm going towards my first body! Crikey, what am I doing? See, the thing is, if the angle's not quite right here, all I'll do is I'll cut more this side, the back face here, until I can compensate. So, um... I think it's probably going to be about right, to be honest. I don't want to take too much at once, out at once. Smaller chisel might have been a better idea. That as well. Not very nice wood. Is it? No. Oh, stuck on the end. 
stuck one in the wood. There you go. <coughs> da, 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 da. Bit of bearing, you can do a bit of bearing, you know. And what I say, if it, if it angles too much, because that's my starting point, I'll take a bit more out here, if, if the angle isn't right. Wide bit of wood and the chisel top of it, you see what I've got yourself. Something like that. This is a pair of chisel. This one's a braids bearing chisel, or use a sharpie. You've got a very thin blade, so you can, you can take really nice shavings off of it. There's a better idea. Now, I'm not that impressed with some of the modern chisels for various reasons. Well, I don't like the design of them for a start. Which is my Diamet here. This is actually quite new. That's probably. Oh, I've got a bit. Oh, I've got surface rust on. Let me sort that out. This is um, an English chisel, Diamet Hemi Tailor. Good chisel, but too thick along these edges. The chisel itself is too thick. You wouldn't use this chisel for framing work because it's, the handle's not heavy enough. It's not a framing chisel. No, it's a pairing chisel. It's just wrong. <laughs> in my mind, I might, I might be wrong, but in my mind, it's wrong. You know, it's um, it's all right. You know, I've got to get across a half lap or something like that. You know, a couple of halving joint. I'm not halving joints. Much can work from the end if you have to. It's all about half lap. You know, halfway through like stuck a bridle joint, so a bridle joint. This is too thick. It's, it's just wrong. It's not this. This one is much much. I was old braids, cast steel. Um, a pairing knot, pairing chisel. And this thing it works really it's a lovely bit of steel as well. Now most of the tools these days seem to be made from stock material. It doesn't go for any uh, process, you know, like, like forged or anything like that. This, this is cast, this is forged. Um or cast steel. Uh, like that. Where's it gone? Oh, Stanley baby here. That's got hand forged plain iron in it. Even my little um wouldn't have that here, my cordy says cordy on that. It's uh what's it what is it? Knife, knife, knife. Oh for God's sake, I've got the cord up. Anyway, that's got a forged plain iron in it. And it's two parts of the seal. Yeah, they're forged together, you know, you get a process. They have not really good strong most, most stuff these days are stopped. Would it be AO A, A, um, or A2 steel? It's all different, you know. It's good steel, you know. But the whole thing is is te is te um, is hardened steel, which can be a good thing and can be a bad thing. Just need to I need to flatten that now to the back edge. I need to take it back right there. These chisels, pairing chisels, are not designed to be hit. That's the whole thing about pairing chisels, they're just designed to be worked. So you've got to be, you know, you've got a nice hand, it's got a nice handle. Although my, my ring, I've lost my ring piece off the end! You see? It's gone. The handle shrunk and it's disappeared. I made a horrible mistake, I did this years ago, this was. I varnished the blooming thing, what a stupid thing to do. <laughs> Don't varnish your tools. Wooden handles, just don't do it. Oh <laughs> I saw um, a video by, uh, I, I love the guy actually, he's really good. And when I saw a live stream with um, oh, Rex Kruger and uh, is it Steve Wright. Steve Wright? Goodbye, Wright, anyway. Um, they did a live stream together. And they're really, they're really yeah, they're, they're, they had a royal banner, that was really cool. And you see, when people do live streams, you see that they really are, don't you? Do you know what I mean? Instead of all this pretense, around all this fancy machinery and all that, you know, invested all everywhere. You know, you don't really see the people who they really, really are. It's all a bit of a con, you know. But um, anyway, I was watching a video by Woodboy Wright, and um, he said, like, 
paint its tools was blue for some reason. It looked awful. <laughs> but all the sort of advantage is all the handles and knobs and totes and stuff. And all. <laughs> Just don't do it. Been there, done that, made those mistakes. So, okay. Well, my God, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's a, well, a little, we need to take a little bit more out of the bag here. Do a good fit. Yeah. That face looks great. I've got a little bit of a gap at the back here, so I need to work that a little bit there. Got to work the baby. There's the top. Top looks good. Yeah, can you see the merit in that now? See, you've got, obviously it's not glued in right from now, but you've got that movement, very little movement that way, it's a little tiny bit. Uh, obviously the movement that way is up to pop straight out. But is that enough splay? I would say that possibly is, maybe you could do it just a touch more. There we go, if I put the top on, if I put the top here, how am I going to hold all this together? If I had the top one there like so, would I end up having it too close? Yeah, if I go any more than that, I think that's probably about right. I think I'm happy at that. Yeah, because if you've got load, if, if you're whacking the top as well, you've got load going down. Do you think that's about right? Do you think I need to give more spray to that? I don't know. I'm looking at it, I don't think so actually. Oh, decisions. Do you know what? I might just get a touch more, just a little bit. Just a little bit more splat. I'll probably regret it because you know what it's like, you know. You can uh, you can you can remove it but you can't put it back. I'm just put a little bit more touch more. Maybe another eighth of an inch on the bottom there, or the top side. Uh, which means I just need the thaw. So I'm just gonna take a little more out of there. Okay. There. I think I've got the same on the sides. Work a bit more. Work the baby. Ooh. Right. <laughs> so we'll take a little bit more at the top. So we've got a tiny amount, tiny bit more splay. Obviously, I can't take more out than the thickness of the actual wood at that point. Well, you could do, but it's not a chip on it. And I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know about you, but if I know stuff like this is very good, do that plays with my mind. I really struggle with it. It bugs me. I've got issues there. There's like a lot of things in life, you know. For instance, for some people, this is just nothing. You know? This is really, just really bog standard, easy carpentry, you know, with to make saw horses. Oh, you know. But if you don't give it a go, as I think, so I could have just screwed the legs on the side and angled it a little bit and maybe stuck some packs and all done what I said about changing the shape of this to make it easier. I could have done all that. But you know what it is, though? If you don't actually do this, if you don't actually. Like recording the video, press you know, we've got to press record. If you don't actually do it, you won't do anything. You have to start somewhere. And yes, you're gonna make mistakes. I've made some loads of blinking, blinking mistakes. Oh crikey, but you learn by don't you? You know, they're expensive mistakes, you don't make them again. <laughs> no. So um yeah, just uh Shoulder plane, you've got number 42 here, number 42. You could do something like this if you want to. If you didn't want to use a chisel, you can just uh, work it in there and literally plane. Your shoulder plane. Well, that's a nice thing to use. Not really what's for, but you really use it for doing that. <clears throat> uh, clean up my rebates and stuff. Then I could use no shoulder plane for that, and a carriage plane. broken off across here they dropped it packed off so what, what what you end up doing was I can't remember how far it was now but he, he ground it all off here right because everything else worked fine you know it was absolutely fine and used it as a chisel plane so okay you haven't got the the um toe but you can use it as a chisel plane still useful to, you know it's all good too think about this flatten it Soul, aren't you? Soul, you know. Oh, that's so nice to use. You get the hang of it. It feels, 
um, feels good. You feel like you're actually um, making a difference, like it's true up a bit. Right, it should be a little bit more now. We'll work that in there a little bit. All right. Work it in there a little bit there. And it should, oh, bottle better now. Have a little bit more flair. You gotta have a bit of flair, you know. Flair, mm. splat, whatever you like to call it. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's about right. See that there? I'm happy with that, that's enough. So now I've got that, I need to mimic that onto each of the four, yeah, you know, each of the four leg positions. So now it's just a case of doing the marking. Let's get the chills out of the way before I bash them against each other. So you've got playing on the side there, you see. Now, there's a lot of arguments about this, isn't there? Oh, should you have your plane? Don't put your plane on, on the plane, put it on its side. Don't put it on the side, put it on the plane. <laughs> you know? Oh, you're never going to damage the plane. I'll tell you, the stuff I've got scattered on my bench at that moment, that certainly would damage it. Oh, I tend to use rubber mats, actually. You know, the ones I've got in the bedroom. And it's um, these things here. Now, I'm interested in overhead camera. I tend to use these. These are... Uh, sound insulation uh, and that's washing machines, one cut and half. And then you, you, I just slam tools on there, whatever way around I want, gently that way up because you know there's nothing on there. And if you designate a space for your tool or your sharps, like who's you're not going to put anything else there, you know. It's about discipline, isn't it? Isn't it really? And you look straight at my bench at the moment, there is no discipline. Oh, let's move that saw out of the way, put the saw back for damage that as well. Oh, this did. The Americans make good saws, you know. But they do. Right. Like the American Stanleys are, are the best Stanleys. So, okay, we've got one in it. So, as we go on the top, it's literally that. It's wider there than it is on the opposite face. And that's what creates the angle. The angle of the dangle. So, I know I've got, I've got to work to now. So, basically, I've got, I've got to transfer that onto the other positions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this bevel to that angle so that makes it easy to transfer the angle to each place. It makes sense, you know. I think so. No, it doesn't. Oh, okay. Be like that. I don't care. All right. <laughs> I'm too low in the tooth to care. All right. <laughs> So I'm going to make sure that is obviously at the same distance from the top on that side. So I'm going to start size about 92 millimetres. So I was only rigging it. So it's 92 millimetres there. There. Well, my mum was growing up, what have you. She used to, she used to love all the old movies and stuff. I've had my movies. But I was staying, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, She's always humming or singing in the kitchen. Well, she, she's gone now, but you know, she's certainly not so on all that. But um, still, when she's 51, cancer, bloody horrible. But you know, of course it is. <laughs> There's nothing nice about it, is there? So, um, yeah. Quite, have you heard about the Harry Parker case? He's, he's died now. On the, um, he was, I think it was back in 2022, 2021, he was diagnosed with um, cancer. And he's, um, after a long battle, he's. Uh, Passed away, poor bugger. Right, so that was that leg. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the legs so they're, I know where they, where they all go. So it's going to be one, two, one. One to one. one. And this one's going to be that leg. So, just in case when I was playing them to width, that maybe I wasn't concentrating and maybe I um, did one slightly. Thicker or thinner than the other one. I took a bit more, took a few more shavings off than the other one. I took a little ACD to it. Get in there, bud. Little cack hand in there. That's it, that's it. That's good. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It's track 29. Oh, I give you a dime. Ba -ba -ba -ba. 
And what we'll do is I'm eyeing down the line to the square because the corner has been taken off, you know, off the, this beam. So I'm having to eye it, eye it up. Otherwise, it would be in the wrong place. Nice. Uh, me uh, mark and gauge again. Exactly the same thing as I did last time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little, old, little pin prick there, and then bring it to the little pin prick, to the little hole, and it should. What's it jump there there for? Go into the right place. There you are. Critical, but it's not a critical thing at the moment, is it? Now I know where this one will come there, don't I? So if I set my marking gauge to that, I know I should have the other side first, but all that. So, oh, yeah. right, there we come. It's a bit of a shake in that one, but it's near the near the, near the um, edge of the timber. A bit of a split. That's all right. Just to make sure I get to the line and not to the split. Right, so that one. So. Any mini money rush? That's one way of messing up, isn't it? Isn't it that way? <laughs> right. I'm going to use the saw. Use my guide again. What the hell, eh? Can I use it? Oh, I could do. Come on, I quite like it. I'm always good, I do. I put it on there first. I use the saw to line up with the line. And then I can then hold the. Um, Guide down to the wood. Anyone see the mistake I'm about to make? No, oh, actually, no, I haven't made a mistake. Oh, that's right. Phew. <laughs> I'll get my tops and my bottoms mixed up, but that's the right way around. Right, let's start again. Phew! I thought I was splaying, splaying the legs inwards on this one, and I realised it's I got the wood that way up, other way around. So I, I had a senior moment, I did. She's off a change.
check the chat. Those in the overhead, on the overhead camera, it's also, I've also live streamed in the uh, short feed as well. Let's have a little bit of chat. Da, 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 da. Things popping up. Oh dear. You keep me from doing any work with all these live things popping up. So it's not just sawdust. Well, you need to get your own flipper workshop built quickly, mate. Now you moved. <laughs> Hello, oh, come up, Nathan Lucas, Stephen, Alzamand, uh, me. <laughs> not, not, not me, I mean, as in, yeah, yeah, the username's me. Okay. Scott Sweetster, I uh, made a couple of these several years ago. Oh, yeah, we mentioned that a minute ago. CLS, yeah. See, if anyone in the United States don't want CLS, it's basically like um, studding timber. Uh, it's not the two by three, but it's usually, oh, two sides actually, okay. But yeah, it's got round corners, I still get splinters. <laughs> Hello, Richard Black Dog. I hope you're well. How you did it? Oh, just, oh God. How you did? I'm doing good, my friend. Hope all went well at the vets yesterday. Yeah, I, I vets. <laughs> did you, did you, my heart doctor. I was put on a bicycle. Yeah, I was put on a bicycle. I was. Yeah, I was put on a bicycle. Uh, to, um, bike. Uh, what was it? 65 RPM for a period of time, and it's all good. So, uh, so far, so good. Anything is my got still got high blood pressure. But um, all the tests so far have actually come back good, so I'm I'm very pleased about that. I'll tell you the thorough here in France, I'll tell you they just um, it's you know they're, they're very much into uh, preventing preventive medicine. That's it. Treasure woman and a treasure woman. I'm sorry. Hello. Ah, <laughs> uh, Dobrosiski. Okay, I, I, did I say that right or not? Uh, Jim Bob, dude, shut up and do it. <laughs> Amateur. Same to you too. At least I can spell amateur. <laughs> uh, shut up, Jim. Nobody cares. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, back to it. All right. Ba -dum -bum, ba -dum -bum. <laughs> See, I've got people watching my back right Yeah. Do they? What you say? You know the thing is though, if you're all worried about it, worried so much all the time, you'd never do it, you'd just procrastinate. That's all you do. You know, sometimes you just gotta give it a go. You don't like it, you know, you just do it again. Until you get it right, until you're happy and satisfied with it. It's pro it's a program it's pro um it's a process of learning, isn't it? And the same with everything that you know, you, to, you, you, pro you you need to learn somewhere. You know, you use machines and stuff like that all the time if you want to, but Unless you actually pick up a tool, you're never going to um, you know, have a real feel for your workpiece, if you work. I think there is only an old saw horse. I'm going to flip her over in a minute. Turn that then. Ah, da, da. Yeah, the old ticket was okay. I'd all wired up. They had all these like um electro things that they're vacuum now. They, they like suck onto you. Ah, there you go. <laughs> the only thing is just I've got all these bald patches all over my chest where the wires are going. <laughs> they wouldn't sit. They wouldn't suck on. They wouldn't. No, Mrs. Take that. But yeah, that was um <laughs> a bit ridiculous. A bit like a film. Uh, what was that? Forty year old. Forty year old virgin. Steve Carroll. Steve Carroll? Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's just a bit disconcerting. I was just pleased that was, that came out well. The other test I had the other day was good as well. So, so far, so good. So, um, I can't remember what the other test was, no? It was a heart related one. Oh, but I can't remember what it was. I wonder if I get a test from for my memory. That's what I need. I need a memory test. It's a bug me now. I can't remember. Everything's in a rush this way. It's not what it's all about. Everything's been in a rush. Look at the 
fair share of um, funny comments. If people have been reading that, so I just um, I just hide them because I don't want them to destroy. I don't want people to deal with that. Yeah, not destroying me like in the um, comments of my own videos. Things, the people who do leave those sort of comments, all they'll do is they'll just keep doing it again and again and again. So I don't, I, I don't really give second chances for that sort of stuff. You can't, I can't spend all my life uh, mo moderating, you know? It's just be thankless task. Some people just want to be uh, nasty just for the sake of being nasty. It's just who they are, you know? I suppose. I think they're the ones with problem. You know what? I kind of wish I didn't cut this. Those saw marks, those extra saw cuts. Oh, who's this? There's somebody at the door! It's the missus. How you doing? Alright. How you doing? I've got your bean. Both my dear missus with her problems with the stomach now. Right? There's um maybe I might have high blood pressure. You're right, I'll miss. Nowhere near the one line yet. Nowhere near. That's the one right on the wrong side of me. Oh, oh. A bit more aggressive. Hey, what? Don't get old. And also, right on both sides of most of my life. And although, you know, I've earned good money in the past and stuff like that. Rexy body, I'll tell you. I used to be handsome, you know. I've got weather, do you see, from the older, from the weather. So this is a hole in the wood, isn't it? It's very resiny. Too much resin. That's what it would be. See a chisel control. Give them a bit of a hash of it. <laughs> like a chisel control. It's about it, not really like pushing as hard as you can in it, but not going for that thin there like so. It's you just yeah. you can't I don't explain it. If anyone's done arm wrestling for you, lock yourself up. It's kind of bit like it restricts your movements, there's a limitation to the movement. Otherwise you'd end up uh, slipping. It's just control. There, oh, cruddy. Oh, man, I'm very, very, very close. It's not quite there yet. Really resonant bit, this is. two places and not in the middle. Do, 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 do. Do, do, 
Splinter! Blimey! You can in and out with it still there. Right in the joint. I like get a knife to start digging it out. If I was Mrs. Mad, I'd do that. Because my people say, why don't you wear gloves? I can't feel anything in gloves. I don't wear gloves. Unless I really have to. This one I won't wear gloves. I need to be able to feel what I'm doing. Using machine, they ooh, chainsaw gloves, obviously, and stuff like that. You know, you use chainsaw gloves. Someone did mention actually in the comments about using chainsaw gloves, but the problem is they're so thick and thick, they're full of that wadding, aren't they? The stuff that's supposed to stop the jam. You don't really feel anything, you have no precision. Precision will work, they're quite difficult to work with. I've had so many there misses in the past. Some, you know, some sites expect you to wear gloves for everything. And some with your, you know, um, machine shops and that do as well. Oh, so dangerous. Bad advice. So what I'm going to do, you'll, help, you'll say this, we'll just do insurance. The insurance company tells you that it's what you're supposed to be doing. It's kind of what you've got to be doing. Because you won't be covered. Too. It's like here in France, you're supposed to, you know, if you've got, if you've got shutters, you're supposed to use them you know, for the security. I, I would argue that the shutters <laughs> just tells the, tells the robbers that you're not there. But saying that in France, you know, people who use shutters, um, not a way to secure the building because you're not there. They, they use them for uh, control and temperature. In summer, you shut them during the day. And open them when the sun goes down. In the winter, it shuts off pretty tough. Do 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 Got that one. Let's not line up. I know I need to work a bit more. Yeah, the far one needs to go in a bit deeper. I'm trying to make sure I keep, I keep it in frame for him. I don't normally work like this at an angle, you see, it seems a bit silly, but you know, things you have to do, kind of like that, you know, I have to angle my body to see this, yeah, it's like, I don't know what page is in the Kama Sutra, but it's one of them, it is, right, there we go, up there, Limit the amount of fixings I use, if any at all. I don't really want any fixings at the top, so I'm probably going to just use pegs and glue. But, yeah, if you've got fixing them, you could hit it with a tool, can't you? I'll do that. Metal fix on top, obviously.
start doing some live streams in the in my office because um, I'm not going to bring up pages and that online and put, bring clips in and stuff as well. So we talk about things like uh, standy tools, dip type tools and stuff like that as well, but also uh, joints and but I'm bringing the evidence you see. sticks I am. So we look down the end there, they're pretty much in, oh I don't know what's come out of it though. Take the word for it. <laughs> so now we need to do the other two. You see, so I think it's before we lose the light, and obviously, I can't not walk the dogs, can I? No, uh, let's see what Mrs. Want as well. That's good, right? So, all we're doing now is minute about on each side. This bit's easy. I don't know, I don't know how to do this way. Right. right, that leg was a two, wasn't it? It wasn't there. That's the one. It's when you get carried away and forget it, forget your markings. So that was the one. This is gonna be the two. Then so two. Or did I drop one? One, two, three, four. Fits the best. I'm going to put it loose. Let's see what's that one? Where's that one? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. That's two. Right, so that's a one. Two. That one. One and two. And that's never. No way. I don't make that mistake. And I want to transfer the marks over. The other two. Gonna, <clears throat> I'm not going to assume that they're the same. So whatever one this is, it's going to be going. It's going to be free. They are free. So it's going to be going in there. Try and do your mark with it, use the mark gauge, don't try and push it in time. Just, just like, right like marks, do two or three, you know, two or three, and that should do enough. Make it a nice mark then. Da, 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 da. So that's going to be three. Oh, this one's going to be four.
those smart gauges with the little wheel in, they look really good, but that wheel doesn't actually sp spin. So you think, oh, it'd be really easy to use, but no, it's just literally just a cutter. That's all it is, really. Perhaps it ran, just rotate it to get a, a fresh edge. These things work, you know. I think they're better when you've got a blade, though. A little, like a little, uh, like, exacto knife blade sticking out of them. I think they're better. You know, like that. All sorts of ways you can do this sort of place. Clamp the cup was very huge easy, wasn't it? Just the clamp. Let's have a look at that clamp. The problem with pencils is obviously you've got the thickness of the lid. Mark the knife will be pretty much bang on. There's all sorts of knives you can use, fold knives, any old, I think the sanding knife will do the same job. I've just made this one, it's quite nice to use, just like pretty dashy. Mark the knife. Made it with an old saw blade and a couple bits of old walnut for the handle. And the uh, rivets there, let's just put the stainless steel bolts. The bolts are good, you see, which cut the heads off because they're threaded. When, once you hour dive it all in, they can't, they can't fall out. They're stuck forever. Right, there's the little edge again. Oops, I'll get that one. That's number three. Give me that one. Each of these legs could be slightly, slightly different. Put it on the arrows. Right. Oh, da 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 and then I'll sand it all up, ready to go and take the arrows off. Well, the outside arrows I could take off before I actually put it together, because obviously it would be awkward. And then maybe it's inside one. Look how fussed I am. Look how fussed am I? I'm not that fussed. I think it's all horse. Right. I'll be using a little block of wood again, because I actually really like it, isn't it?
well, I've said operation last year, it looks like she's going to have to have it done again. With the um, so and softer, so I can't have it on. call it Lasubium. Oh, anyway, that's it. I'll do it for them too. But um, basically, like I said, Food at that hospital where she went last time, yeah, it was diabolical, I have to admit. Um, if it was a uh, local hospital, it was um, oh, towards myself, it's its control. Um, if it was a local hospital, we wouldn't want to take it much better food, but she, there's only certain things she was allowed to eat as well. Like, she was the every day she was having like watered down smash mash, you know, that powdered potato stuff. Oh my god, it was awful. Tried it, she's stuck to say. The thing is, she's vegetarian, and the French don't really, they're not really, they don't really cater for vegetarians. <laughs> so, so that's a bit really hard for a poor woman. show you actually the reason why it's a good idea to use do the saw cuts if you can go and take it in all the same depth because I don't think you can see that there there's well when I took the big lump out in one go it's created a bit of a gouge in there it's, it's full of the grain so it is of um, cherry doors to make for the customer. Panel, cherry panel doors. And when you're doing all the moulding, see on the edge of the panels? The line with big old rounded bits, I was constantly sharpening that flipping thing up. It was just um it's burns, you know. It was cutting but it was, it was, it was burning as well at the same time. Which wasn't very helpful. Just a little bit more. Getting close. Again. Uh, I'm going to stick with the shorts for time in until I've got enough people. Not 
direction. Or I can talk to my camera sort of that. new people in here as well because um, a lot of the subscribers to this channel come from the shorts that I've got on so it, was, uh, it makes sense that uh, I cater for them as, you know, as a priority really for, I suppose is it, pri is it a priority or just it's the fact that I deal with it for you too who knows This was a um, which, which one was it? What one is it? It is. Oh my god, I marked this out for you. So it is. That's probably the fork, but that's going to be the front. I don't mark the leg. That's a nice tight one. Oh! I like it tight, I do. There you go. That's good. I'm happy at that. Yeah, that's fine. Be careful, you knock it out that way, you're going to splint and you're take, you're taking the arises off. So we have got to be really, really careful when you've got that. If it's tight, it's a little bit more clean out. Covered up, it's got a board on top there, isn't it? It's pr pretty good anyway. Right, the last one, and then we can stick the wood in the owl. This is number three, which is that way. Let me throw that on. This place is. It's just so good. It's just ridiculously easy for anyone to make. I wish I had one years ago because it just makes life easy. And everything but the other ones, I've like done 45 as well. If you're on the building site now, you're like, oh, you can't have access to a chop saw, or you don't have to move it about, and you've got one arbitrator to do around the door. This is just a 45 degree version of, of that. Works so well. I was really, really surprised how well that worked. Just one of the little near their magnets in there. Yeah, put the fence on there, make it easy to you know, plant and bench or whatever you can do with the uh, to your back network, mate, if you're on site where. Yeah, it just works. Especially handy when you want to start that cut. Stays as a saw for you. Um, should you try the Jetley Spulsal? See if that, if that works. I know it works, but I mean, for this job. Well, yeah, again, I haven't got to um, think about it. I just need to put the saw back as well as I might be doing it. This isn't an ideal position for the saw anyway. Yeah. It just works. <laughs> I hope it's at 90 degrees now, yeah, and then that face there. Now, now I said. <laughs> in the wrong place. That's daft. Right, so I'll just do what I've got there then. For the western saw, I would will, I will do. A bit old hat there. This one's a tie 
That one actually gone, looks like it's gone astray on, on both sides of the same line, the same distance. These lines on top here, well, I don't face her, Craig, but I hadn't lined them up properly because there's an arrow that's taken off there and I've got a lump out there. So I haven't actually eyeballed it properly. So you all make mistakes, but it doesn't matter. No. I've got to keep, keep telling yourself that, Marcus. People watch you, you know, oh, crikey, they watch you. Mess. So if you follow through, if you, if you follow through with, with, with your mallet, that's one thing, you're, you're effectively going to try and make that, you make that chisel go over there. But you're just short, just short impacts. Yeah? It don't have to be a race, does it? If you can make mistakes, it's because you've done it at the bull in a charm shot. Stop. Allow it to do its thing. So when you're doing things like this, then you have these faces are square. Yeah, the, the cheeks here on this uh, this bridal joint, sort of bridal joint. Uh, uh, it's a half, it's half that. It's a half and joint. Like that. It's not half. This is really half. Resistance. So what I'm doing is I'm put. I know I'm doing that with the chisel, but I'm pushing against it to create a resistance. So it helps with the control. If I didn't have no pressure there, that'd be too free and easy. And that's when you can slip. So I just you know, apply a bit of pressure, push down. So sometimes you want to see you doing that. You know, I'm basically applying pressure. The same if you're doing anything. You know, if you clean up the cheeks, or, you know, around the uh, pins on a dovetail or something. Tails or the pins. Remember what I had done Monday? That's echography. Yeah. Fuck, I don't remember that. Go on, yeah, I did echography on Monday. And uh, that's really interesting. It was, um, it's like the echo sound for the heart. You can just see it. The shape of it, what have you. It's very bizarre. You see all the valves and stuff. You know, all the ventricles. Is you walk away with all your stuff. So, like, for instance, any, uh, like, for instance, when I had my uh, cardiograph thing, you know, uh, I've, I've got a bit of reams of paper with all the what's it's on it. <laughs> you know? It's interesting, all the x rays, all that sort of stuff. What is the ideal job that isn't? Damaging to your health. To work on building sites, most definitely are. Uh, and also, working in an office can be as well because you know you don't have much exercise at all. It's like it's both ends of the spectrum, and both ends of the poor health scale as far as work is concerned. And, you know, I suppose we're 
we need to put my bills on, you don't really have a lot of choice. In the sense that, you know, you either do it or you don't get paid. Whereas I suppose with, um, if you're working in an office, you can always, I don't know, go to the gym, I don't know, lunch or something, or before you get to work. So you work, yeah. Maybe if you work from home, that's obviously very unhealthy, because these people wouldn't do it anyway, would they? So, um, again, you avoid the germs, like you know. I don't know what, what is the healthiest job. Swimming instructor, maybe. Lots of swimming. Annoying because I've got that joint problem as well. So all my, I used to do a lot of weightlifting, and it's like um, I've had to get rid of it because I can't do it anymore. I got rid of it, yeah. It was just, just it literally just something supposed to be coming this afternoon, actually, for something. But um, what can you do? You know, I can't, well, I mustn't be doing that sort of thing, otherwise, I'm going to cause even more damage. Get a bit deeper, I think. I had a really stupid, oh I did something really stupid, I had 40 kilos in, ke in kettle weights and the chain and, and the bars and I was curling them, because I've, I've got to tell you, I used to be wasting away now, but <laughs> I used to be able to um, just sort of lock your muscles up, have you not know, been doing arm wrestling and stuff like that, it's a bit like I've been doing this sort of work, really, locking your muscles up, and it's, um, but I was lifting more than my actual body could cope with, so I was a bit stupid. Well, bits do it's very stupid because now I'm, I'm suffering now. I've got um, inflammation in my elbows, where, like, like tendonitis, you know. So where, the, where, the, where the tendons and the muscles are all dry onto the bones, is all damaged. I showed in a scan I had last week. That was a, yeah, a tad annoying. So that all, so just, uh, sorry if I've got enough weight to carry about it anyway. <laughs> Not the healthiest weight, it must be said. Right, nearly there, nearly, nearly. More, a bit deeper the back edge. About another, another three or four mil off, the, off this back corner. If I was doing this on the regular arm saw, I'd, I'd, make, I'd make a jig up for it. We'd have to make a jig up because I'd have to twist the wood at the same time to create the, uh, the angle. I'm saying regular arm saw, it's basically a saw on a rail. So it's, um, it's just, you know, it's basically creates a, a level cut. It's really good shape. A lot of people consider them dangerous now. Which I'd argue that they are. I would agree that they are, but I'd also argue that they are use. Use it, use it, ignorance, foolishness. So I don't generally not use it for anything other than doing 90s anyway. Uh, when I do 45s, I don't actually use the indents on the saw to bring it round to 45. I, I, I just use a jig, far more accurate. And then I, then I, I found it, um, doing my little bit of up on my, my, my little guillotine over there. 45, you can create a really good. Really, really good 45. In the workshop, you know, it's not something to do on site. I mean, in the house, I mean, but in the workshop, it's made perfect sense to me. See, 45 is something people really have problems with getting, you know, getting a 45. Let me show you something. I might, I might show you this before. If you are doing your uh, uh, pitch frame or something like that, yeah, and you've created all your 45s, um, and you've got that last that last 45 seems to be slightly off, you know, and you're just not quite um, not quite get, come together. Well, it's easy to sort out. What you do is you don't do three and try and get the last one sorted. You do them as two separate halves. You have a bit of sandpaper on something that's flat, and literally just sand it that flat there like so. Then do exactly the same on the other one against the sandpaper because then you'll have those two faces will be perfectly in line with each other. And when you bring them together, so they'll be in line with each other as well, you'll end up with a decent layer. Yeah, simple. 
like it, but it works. into place without any mechanical fixings. I feel I need them later. I will, but at this stage I don't want any in there. Let's have a look. See how it looks. It's close to there. And I now need to see whether or not they line up. And that's a three and a four. It was number three over there this is the number four that's four the three okay so that's what we'll go into that one that's three sorry that's three those two go together that's the way that goes I don't matter if this is not 100% in line with the other neck on the opposite face, but I want them in line long ways if it makes any sense. Need to go a bit deeper that end. Oh, no, it doesn't. Let's try. All right, this one is a little bit steeper angle than the other side. That one looks. This one looks right. That one looks a bit shallow. So I need to go a bit deeper on that one. I think. That one, that one's a, uh, that's the one. That's one. So we've got to go in there, so they marry up together. Oh, I've got that pretty done. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's good. That's good. So they're in line with each other. So, so we've got the other side, hopefully it don't fall off. <laughs> Ooh, there's a bit of hump in the middle of that one. I thought my leg fell off then. <laughs> right, I'll wire these up for any reason. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty good. I think I can live with that. Let's mix some glue up, shall we? Let's mix some glue. We've been using cascamite. Could use polyurethane. Could use polyurethane or cascamite. Oh, decisions, decisions. Anyway, it's a pop. Here's your 
pot I found earlier. So we're going to be using castor white powdered resin wood glue. If you mix this you really will be wearing a mask. I will not be because I can't put my mask on. Uh, and also, I actually struggle breathing. I'm asthmatic. I found it really difficult in the hospital. They were, um, in the hospital again now, in France. Any, any places where there's uh, people, got to be wearing a mask. Well, that'll mix the stick, that'll do. That's all right. That's water. I think I've got a good glue for this, that'll be um, polyurethane. Would be a good glue for that already. But we're going to use cast oil, because then I'll just show you the mixer. Mixing paddle. Do, 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 do. Now the water. Where's me water? Where's me water? Where is? Dun, 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 dun. So, powder is wood glue. It's a formal, uh, you really have formaldehyde glue. Or you must really wear a mask. I need to find a mask that I can wear without the glasses steaming up, uh, without not being able to breathe. What I could do is when I'm trained powered ones, that'd be good. On the battery pack, I've got a fan in, so I've basically got a filter system on with a fan. So that'd be the ideal thing. We've got Frank Quinn. I think we found it, I don't know if it was even more than that. An extra battery pack, so we need 100, 100 quid for the face mask. And also they're heavy, that's something, isn't it? So I put the powder in first, and then the water, and then I mix it until it's a bit of a paste. And I decide to myself, hmm, it doesn't need more. If it's still a bit thick at that point, I, I might hold back, I might not add any more. Because the more you mix it, the more fluid it becomes. Is that my idea why I think about taking dogs for a walk? Just a second. Anyway, I've mixed it up. It's a bit on the runny side. At this stage, you can add a little bit more if you want to, but not when it starts setting. You've got to go like cottage cheese. So, um, as long as you do it soon, you can put it in with that. I need to mix with the paddles up, is what I need to do. It's like lollipop sticks. Big wide ones, that's better. I made it a bit runny. Clamping it is going to be a little bit awkward. Mm, it's still a bit thick. But actually, why do I mix it thick? Thin. It's too much water. It's concentrating, that's what it is. Do, 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 do. The Castle White is by Eureka Blues. Now, is it the name that sticks about it? Is what they say. But it's, um, it just works. And it's polyvine, so they ruined it, unfortunately. But now it's, um, Eureka. So probably fine, but they did erect it. It's a good glue. It's a good glue again now, so I don't like use it. I use it for most of my stuff. I'm gonna get the hang of it, you know. Makes perfect sense. Now, it kind of makes perfect sense to put a mechanical fix in. Because it you get away not using clamps or at an angle. I don't really want to, you see. So I'm gonna keep sliding down. Right, so We need to uh, get that out of the way, put the glue on there, and then we can, you know, if you don't want to be doing all these joints and stuff, you know, just do for the purpose of video, really, I suppose. If no one was watching, I'd probably whack those screws in. <laughs> right, so that one's one. I've got one on the side because I've got to cover up, you see. So that's one, that one's two. Right. You can just screw them on the side if you really want to, you know, that's all of the job. It's definitely stronger though if you put joints in, way stronger. Right, so that one is three and that one's four. That's why I just whack some glue in there. Just make sure that was a bit good. 
You could use a brush if you want, but you'll probably have to chuck them. Because they, they, they're weird, brushes do with Casca White. Um, I do have, a, well, that's what I use quite a lot of. What I, yeah, well, I'm saying, what I use generally is this, your paint roller. I literally do that. These things are always brilliant. Yeah, this one. So I'm doing like edge edge glue ups. Not really well for that. I've got tape wrapped around it, so when it gets to the point of building up too much old glue on there, I just run my knife along one face and then literally just uh, peel it off all the crusty glue. Their faces. Off as you go. Mix up too, glue, too much glue, but I'd rather mix up too much than too little. See, so glue is going to take the um, root of least resistance. So, um, the idea of just getting a square you've got the glue and just push, you know, just doing a little squirt on there. It doesn't, I don't find it works very well. And I've pulled joints apart in the past, so I found that I do dry, a lot of dry spots when you do that. Yeah. Right, what was this? This is number, that is four because I didn't, that's one I didn't mark. That's two and that's one. One, two. Hello Pandora! I've got a dog! Ooh, let me scoop her up, she's heavy this one, she's wet! Oh, oh here she is! Hello! <laughs> I think she wants a treat. Pandora. Right. Good girl. Right, let's go start the dog coming. So that one is number one. That's going to go on there. I don't care if it's glue squeezing it all over the place, I just want it to be glue everywhere. What would I be rolling that? What would I be rolling that? Let me share with it. Now, the legs aren't going to be in line with each other, because they're going to be trimmed afterwards. So, it's fair to say. The only thing about this casket white is, when it goes off, it goes off hard. So if you get any, um, I don't know, any voids, for instance, it will literally be hard. That glue will harden where the voids are, and they won't compress. So I just found it really good, especially if you do warts and tendon joints. I do like casca white for that. Okay, what's that left? Number two. Here's number two. Glue's going to cut it everywhere. It is. <laughs> so what are you using? Because I've, I've, I've mixed it now. I won't waste it. You won't waste it anyway, Marcus. Well, at least we'll get into all the nooks and crannies, I suppose. That casket white is also, it could be a quite good finish. All my benches are finished in casket white wood glue. All my, over there is casket white wood glue. And everything, I just, yeah, it works. It's strong. It's worth it. It's, it's, like it's almost like you're using a Wessex epoxy system. Well, not quite, but because that's too bad. But, you know. You know what I mean. Anyway, I've got to flip her over. Again. I'm going to try not to use, not to use uh, mechanical fix. If I have to, I will, but I hope I don't need to. So. I just heard the wife. Apparently, I've got to make a cake. Apparently, in a, in a live stream, because I made her make a, a bird box. <laughs> then that's number four. That one's going to go in a hole. Let's put some on there. Mm 
you can just glue pots on. Whatever you like. I won't be. I used to have a glue pot, I used to you know, hate to put your glue pot, I used to use that for years, I don't know, for years, you know, with um, glue poles and stuff, pot mount glues, <coughs> if you're doing furniture it's great, bare work and marketry and all that sort of stuff, not for the sort of stuff I've been doing here in France, everything in the construction type woodwork, you know, looks like I've got a couple of jobs in, um, one has been almost confirmed, which is good, Pay the bills because you two don't. Uh, another one, which is a big, quite a big shutter job. Just making the shutters themselves, you know, but just basically yeah, this material, um, but with the but with the tongues on from roofs. Oh, it's a good fit. Those legs are not bad. Now, if you yeah, if you want to use mechanical fixes, coach bolts are the ideal thing. They really hold them tight. You can use obviously screws if you want, but coach bolts would be the best. If if it starts slack, then if the wood starts shrinking on you, you can always just tug up the bolts. And you set you sink all the washers in, what have you. The first what I do is I tend to use a, a forster or a spade bit and sink all the heads down lower so you don't hit two of them. But also it gives a bit more lateral support. So instead of just relying on the, the bolt itself. Um, on its shaft, it's relying on its head, it gets a bit of an extra, an extra more weddy, a bit more weddy. Right, that one's out of there, that one needs to be. So, you see the legs at an angle and they will need to be trimmed. Can I get away? I'm just clamping it like that. Huh? Can I do that? So I don't need to. Extra little blocks and so on. Oh, that's actually that was okay. That was okay. I squeezed that nicely. Oh, squeeze her up! So I'm quite happy with that one. Just try this. There's going to be no one for that one. I ain't got that one foot. I lost the foot off the other can. Oh, that's annoying. Where's the other one? I've got to see this one. Oh, my dear miss has been putting my tools away again. I've been putting them in the wrong places, I bet. Where are my two Revix clamps? I can't see them. Oh, no, that's not it. Where do they go? Hmm, I've got two more clamps like these. Revix ones. So. Alright, hopefully it's not going to slide. Okay. Put it on its one size is clamped up. Hopefully it doesn't come undone. Now I'm gonna do this one. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully it doesn't uh, slide off the top. You can screw a log on it, you know, you see it, you know, at the right angle. I'm not going to that should just have oh god, now it's got to slide and I won't let it slide. Oh blimey! Can I do it? Get some paint on still, okay. Right, let's try again. Right. I know it's going to mark the wood, but I'm not worried. It's a source. I'm not making a pre-source, so I want to make a tool that works. As long as you can get rid of the dimples. If, you, if you've got um, a dimple in a piece of wood, it could be a piece of oak, a piece of pine, or anything like that, where you're dented, hit with a hammer or something, well, you can get rid of that with an iron, a tea towel, and a drop of water. Here we go. There's a video on this channel, actually. I'm really tearing the fibres there, look. You know, I can see it. Uh, and it was, like I said, it doesn't matter. It's a saw horse to do a job. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not... It's not good at the moment, I've got, to, I've got to screw the legs in on a flat surface. So, my main worry is are the legs in line with each other? That is pretty darn good. That is pretty darn good. Oh, I was going to do a bit of squeezing at the top of that one. What happens 
glasses. Oh dear boy, she's just switch comes in there and help. And then hides all the tools up. Can't tell I said that. <laughs> right, squeeze that, that's better. Glue squeezing that is a good sign. Now keep it glue, you don't want to squeeze it all out. You know, if you've got a tight thick joint and they squeeze the glue out, you have to hold it together. Right, up. Over the bench. So what? Top round. Obviously, it's gonna to have to be scri um, the. I'm gonna to have to uh, scribe all the legs in the bottom on a flat surface. Round them up and do what I'll do with them. The houses off. I was gonna take the houses off before I put the gear on. I forgot. You know. Um, and then so, so far so good. So the part way there. I'll grab you. I've got to do. Right, pick up the Let's move. Hang on. Charge, there we go. So as you can see, glue is squeezing out, it is. So we've got the we've got four legs. So it should be in its yeah, by itself should be pretty solid really, just like that really. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a top on it, which is gonna be in the form of this board, so then we can actually clamp to it. And also we're gonna have holes in it, um, a bit like these holes in my bench here for the hold fasts, which I happen to have one over there. Okay, and the idea is then we can then clamp things on. Yeah, if I clamp there and a the clamp there, I can have a piece of wood on the top there, I'll use you saw at the end. Now, that's going to be going probably about there with the top. So it, it clears the ends of the legs easily when you're sawing. And even here, that isn't too far over. And it's got enough splay on just enough for, that, for its height. Because it's, obviously it's not very high, because it's only knee height. So it's, a, yeah, it's about the height of a coffee table. So you get your knee on it and actually cut your piece of wood so anyway i think that's it for now i do apologize for those on, on the uh, in the vertical stream can you see my beautiful face you lucky beggars you look at the top of my hair <laughs> well um i'm gonna shut that stream down now that's something else i need to try and sort out uh okay i'm stopping the stream thanks for joining us guys and girls oh who we've got in there we've got hello daughters and reavers hello there uh and jamie parfait hello there. i hope you've Hope you're good. Hope you're good. Uh, I'm just going to sign off that one. Stop that one. Yep. Get that stream easy. <laughs> and I'm going to say to blue after I've read the chat in the vertical stream. Hello, Jim Bob. Hello there. Oh, God, here we go again. Amateur, amateur, amateur. I think, Jim Bob, I've had enough of you already. Uh, Jim Bob, a uh, hard user on this channel. Damn it. I've hidden you, so it's tough. I, I can't be, I can't, I, I can't be doing this as a one man, one man band, and worrying about what people are writing in, in the chat. If people do that, they'll just hide. And, and I'm not going to give second chances of that. You can't, can you? You know. Did he, did he, did he, did he, there we go. Um, let's put, oh, hang on, not on live chat. Let's put it onto live chat. I should have changed things a little bit. Uh, Jamie Parfait. Is it parfait or puffet? <laughs> uh, LIP, hello, hello, Wally. Love your child. Cheers, my friend. Cape Town, blind in South Africa. Oof. 
Bonsai project. Hello, Bonsai project. Oh, we've missed a sketch. <laughs> uh, oil up, wood ninja. I'm coming over. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> uh, who's Mr. Sketch? Okay. Uh, it's looking good. Yes, come together. I think the joints are all fairly tight. I think they, they all look pretty, pretty good joints, really. Because I've been doing them sort of live and that. It's really mess up, isn't it? You know, uh, but I'm not saying all fairly good, all fairly tight, so they're gonna be pretty, pretty strong in it. You know, it's a sore horse. You know, I'm not trying to get pretty. You know, you see people with these pretty benches. What's it all about? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just don't know what mess I'm working in. Crap everywhere. <laughs> it's not normally like it actually. I normally be pretty good, but it's a. I'm only trying to do a million different jobs. I've been trying to make um short videos for the channel, so you've got all these different things going on all the time, and, and stuff I need to sort out in it anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's done quite good, it's just quite, it looks quite nice as it is actually without the top on, but I need that extra width on the top, so but the girth, you know, yeah, so, so that's what she said. It's coming down, have I missed? Hi, 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 nice sharp, she isn't too bad, I could do a bit of sharpening. I was watching a, a video clip today actually on YouTube Shorts, and it's, and it's <laughs> looking like that, it, uh, good job, good job and all that. I thought, my God, sharpen your chisel. <laughs> you know, you put it down so easier. <laughs> Just had a sharp chisel. It was all rusty. <laughs> oh, thank you. Nice to find you too, Hollow. Oh, hola. Hola, X. Oh, cheers, buddy. Thanks. Cheers, Gary W. Oh, enjoy your videos, mate. Uh, drunken dwarfs making videos. No, yeah. Am I a drunken dwarf? I am short. Five foot seven, so that's fairly short, isn't it? Am I drunk? No. I touched a drop today. No. I plenty of coffee's mine. Plenty of coffee. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Richard Black Dog says, I remember getting taught carving and told not to worry if I go wrong. They don't. Just go, yes. Just stick another bit of wood on. It gave me a lot more confidence. Yeah, you, you can't worry about it. You just... Too many people procrast sorry, I'm wobbling about it. Too many people procrastinate and they worry so much that, and they don't achieve anything because they haven't tried. And you, you're never gonna get anywhere unless you just give it a go. So you sharpening your tools, you'll mess up, so blah and what. Don't worry about it. They don't allow people to get you down either. Say, oh that's shit. Don't worry, worry about it. Say, well maybe it is. So what? I'll have another go. You know, just um you've got to be positive about it because everything's a learning process, isn't it? You know? Ask the missus, she'll know. Well, I hope you got better. Yeah. No? You haven't got tools? Oh, God. <laughs> you need to go and get yourself some, you know? Wow. <laughs> oh, I also got a, a butter spoon. Oh, I love seeing wood getting carved. Yeah. It's like uh, ASMR. So, what's that all about? I don't quite get it. ASMR. Yeah. I'm, oh, but we've got another project on the go. Actually... You might have saw in a previous video, we were doing some clearing out over here. Uh, do, 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 I'm going to clock off in a minute, but watch. We've been busy in here, and a bit of a tidy up, and we took some more bits and pieces out. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to, we're going to take everything out and start again, basically. And we've got to stiffen the ceiling up because it's shit. That's how it was. Yeah, we come here. And we took all this out on the side here, and Caroline said she's going to point all these back walls up. To make it a little little space because I've got a bit of laser in there. Now I've managed to fix it and get it working. I don't earth all. There's so much static as making the um, computer disconnect from the actual machine. Stupid design. But I've done that. It's all earthed. Um, so that will, once I get all in that room and this all sorted out, we'll be doing it in there. I can't get through. Uh, there we go. So, yeah, and um, I've lost track of what I was going to say. Oh yeah, we will make a cabinet as well. Now I've got a frame in there which has got it says Wally Bois on it, which is why we went in there actually to show you. You might have saw it when you went in there. There's a frame, it's my whiteboard over there. Right, but the whiteboard's not good. So we're gonna I'm gonna use the frame as the uh frame for the face face frame for the actual ca cabinet. I'm gonna build another cabinet, tool cabinet. Um because I can't get all my tools in there. No. We could build another one here, you see, where this is Wally Bar. That sign will go, there'll be another cabinet there. With more tools there. Give me an excuse to go and buy some and fill it up, you see. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be important then, you see. This is still mine, she's pretty good, though, to be fair. Yeah. 
So, anyway, we've got our saw horse together. Maybe tomorrow or the next day I'll go live again and we'll look at um, levelling the legs up. So it's um, true. And I'll probably use the table saw table for that because that's, that is true. That's the easiest thing to use, to be fair. Um, scribing the legs off. Cut all the these off flush on the top here. And then we'll mount the uh, top, which is this could be the top. Because like I say, I want to wide the top. Um, we'll clean this all up as well, obviously. And that can be mounted on, onto the top of that. Where it's going to be living is under the sliding table on my table saw here. So it's actually going to be sitting on the floor down there, so whenever I do that, I'll just kick it out and use it. Um, I'm not going to store tools in it, but we'll have a tray, which probably never video. Um, I'm not working at where, where best I want a tray, but we'll put a little tool tray in the bottom here as well. Um, but it will create stability, maybe. I don't know. Or it might just be a little drop, it might be even just a drop in tray. One way I'd do that is you could do that by literally uh, drilling right through there to there and use a bit of broom handle. And then the tray can hook over the broom handle on each end so you can remove it if you want to. If you don't want the tray on. That's the idea anyway. So, yeah, let's go on down to the bottom again. Bonsai, bonsai project with Mr Sketch. <laughs> Have you got snow forecast up there? Not yet. I uh, don't know where about you are, but we're in France, but there's no snow forecast. It's actually gone sunny. It's horrible this morning, but it's, um, it's, the sun has actually finally come out. So, not yet. No, I won't be surprised. How long have I been in France? Since 2009. So, uh, a little while. My French is terrible, though. I get, we get by, but it's just, um, my French is terrible. Look, look, yeah, constantly learn, but that's not my skill set. Yeah, I learn from my hands, you see. And it's, um... I struggle that that kind of learning I struggle with, so I'm not that good at it. Pronunciation, it's probably my Norfolk. It really bugs me up. Uh, da -da, there we go. How's your laser going? I've actually fixed it and it's working though. Um, what's happening is it was getting halfway through the burn and then it literally just froze. No matter what I did, it, you couldn't restart it. It didn't want no. So um, I've actually earthed it all. All the frame sections all earthed each other. And then it goes to a connector that she goes into a plug onto, into the wall. So it disperses static electricity. Um, and now it seems to be working. I had my first burns out of it last night. So, um, yeah, I was very pleased at that. There's a video on the channel, actually, um, of the first little go. <laughs> but I, I did a couple more since then, long ones. That's when the problem was when you try to do the full width of the scan, 400 mil. When you try to do the full, full width of the, you know, of the burn, full width burn, <laughs> the ones at a minute. It was creating so much static in the top rail that it was just causing all sorts of problems. But um, I fixed it now. I don't understand why it wasn't isn't in the part of its design. You'd think they'd actually thought of that, wouldn't you? You know, what was it that takes somebody like me to wrap my brains over? Hang on, there's static electricity, we need to get rid of it. <laughs> it seems pretty obvious. You know, you'd think they'd actually make it a part of its actual inherent inherent design, wouldn't you? Anyway, it's time for me to go. I've got to catch up with the missus and walk the dogs, you know. So do do do. You've travelled far and wide, just a little bit. <laughs> anyway, I might see you tomorrow, if not the next day. Toodaloo!